So we've all seen this graph or ones like it hundreds of times. Why is there still so much disbelief and distrust toward climate science? Do we need to pile on even more evidence or do we need another way of talking about it? For difficult conversations, sometimes art is a more effective voice. So tonight I'm gonna to share a sampler of art created around ideas of climate change. In Tali Weinberg's piece, Beyond Measure, each one of the linear elements, each row depicts change in av average annual temperature for a different location. The redder colors depict warmer temperatures, so you can see annual warming trends from left to right on each row. For this piece, Weinberg wrapped natural dyed threads around medical tubing. Data visualizations like Weinberg's help people see the data in compelling ways that may feel friendlier or maybe more convincing than a graph. Another data visualization project, the Tempestry Project, invites participants from all over the world to use a standard set of colors and knit maximum daily temperature, with each one depicting one year at one location. Arranged chronologically from left to right, you can tell this series had different knitters, and that as years advance, the dark greens of cold winters decrease and the reds of hot summers increase. Art can awaken our sense of loss and grief. Danish artist Olafur Eliasson collaborated with a geologist to set up Ice Watch in Paris in 2015 during the COP21 talks. They imported blocks of ice from a glacier near Greenland that was already melting and placed them in a public square. The team also set up Ice Watch at several other locations, shown here at the Tate Modern in 2018. Although costly from an environmental perspective, each block costs the energy equivalent of flying one person round trip from London to Greenland. The impact of the work was significant. In this installation, Australian artist Janet Lawrence used objects from the collection of the National Museum of Natural History in Paris to highlight the loss of coral reef life. Coral reefs are some of the most biologically diverse habitats on the planet, and tragically, most are dying as a result of warming temperatures and ocean acidification. For this piece entitled High Water Line, Eve Mosher researched sea level rise predictions for New York City, then walked 70 miles of New York coastline, drawing a blue chalk line on the ground, 10 feet above sea level, the anticipated high water line due to climate change. In Manhattan and Brooklyn, Mosher involved the community in high water line. The project raised awareness and stimulated conversations about climate change and its local effects talking about place. Incidentally, five years later in 2012, when Hurricane Sandy made this prediction a temporary reality, Mosher remarked, I never wanted to be right. Mel Chin created a mobile phone app called Unmoored for what he calls a mixed reality experience. Using the app in Manhattan, the undersides of boats could be seen floating overhead for an exaggerated but eerie sense of what's to come. An internationally recognized artist who lives near Asheville, Chin often uses dark humor to highlight environmental destruction and social inequities. Chin works in many media and often insinuates art into unlikely places, including destroyed homes, toxic landfills, and popular television. In 2018, Storm King Art Center in upstate New York presented an exhibit called Indicators, Artists on Climate Change. As part of this exhibit, Allison Janae Hamilton created this installation called The People Cried Mercy in the Storm. Two towers of white tambourines memorialized the thousands of black migrant workers killed and buried in unmarked graves as a result of two hurricanes in the 1920s, reminding us that climate disasters often hit black communities the hardest. Also at Storm King, Jenny Kendler installed Birds Watching, a set of 100 birds eyes fabricated with reflective film mounted on aluminum each one depicts the eye of a bird species threatened or endangered by climate change. Canadian photographer Edward Bertinsky captures arresting overhead images of dystopian landscapes. He made a documentary with Jennifer Bikewall and Nicholas Depensier entitled Anthropocene, the Human Epic, released in 2018. This is a still from that film, an image of sawmills in Lagos, Nigeria. John Akumfra is a London artist of Ghanaian descent. This is his six channel video installation entitled Purple at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston. Akumfra says, this is not the 18th century anymore. It's not unlimited landscapes to explore ad infinitum, wasting away. 
The sense of game over, the encroaching closure is the animating impulse behind works like this. So I've shown some art that depicts data in compelling ways, sounds a warning or elicits our sense of grief. Artists can also highlight some potential solutions. In Maya Lin's Secret Life of Grasses, three 10 foot tall tubes each house a single plant of prairie grass showing their extensive roots. This installation at Storm King Art Center demonstrates the potential of grassland restoration to capture and store carbon from the atmosphere. In this piece, Fly with Aerosene Pacha, Argentinian artist Tomas Saraceno worked with a community of partners to engineer a solar powered balloon flight and even broke some records. The longest, highest free human flight at over two and a half kilometers distance and 272 meters altitude. Led by and inspired by Saraceno's vision, aerosene.org encourages us all to engage in collective creative projects and make our own floating balloons out of recycled plastic bags. And they offer us some simple instructions. By inviting us to experiment ourselves, they awaken our sense of play. Play, curiosity, creativity, the courage to fail, willingness to work with others. These are traits that make us human, make life worth living. And as it turns out, we just may need these traits in order to survive. Thanks for watching.